welcome back to Hartsdown Park for this evening's FA Cup tie between Margate, Hayes and Eugene. It's me, Charlotte Richardson, and I'm delighted to be joined by Eric. Eric, what was your thoughts, or what were your thoughts, on the first half? It was certainly a lively half of football, end-to-end -end action. I would say Hayes and Yedin just edged it in terms of chances, um, potentially possession as well, and a really well-taken goal from Rowe, bashing the ball into the top corner with his left foot. Yeah, it's the visitors who have the lead. It looks like they might be making a change at the start of this second half. Rico Greco on the sidelines here. We will try and pick out the player that he is replacing. It looks like I can't see Jack Shepard. He is a young defender. Or Jake Rico. Shepard. Greco is a young defender and so potentially if Shepard's not on maybe they're going a bit more defensive at the back to try and see out this game. I'd be very surprised because Shepard was definitely a standout performer from the visitors. Um, is he on the pitch? It doesn't look like he is so maybe that is the swap. Margate sticking with the starting 11 and if you've only just joined us Eric do you want to do the honours of, of going through the Margate team this evening? So we've got Bailey Vose in goal, uh, Chris Sessegnon at right back with Jay Porter on the left. Liam Friend partnering Ben Swift in the centre of defence. Reese Prestige sitting just in front with Freddie Monker and Archie Burnett in slightly more advanced midfield positions. John Ufua leading the line with Connor Evans and Luke Carey on either flank of him. And it is Jake Shepherd who's come off, who was instrumental in Hazen getting goal. Surely an injury, Charlotte. Yeah, you can only think maybe he picked up a, a slight niggle there, and it is the visitors who are, have tinkered with their lineup. As both teams were out for the second half, it was the referees and the officials <laughs> we were waiting for on this evening game. It's, it's, it's nice and mild. We, we call it mild, don't we? Because we know coming ahead of us this season we're going to have some cold, blustery nights at Hartstown Park. But the conditions are good here. And I think for Margate in the second half, it will really be just about showcasing themselves and their talent a little bit better. We certainly thought there was more gears to go from the from the team. It looks like who we thought was Rico Greco in number 14 has changed his shirt for number 15. So perhaps Scott Donnelly is coming on in place of Jake Shepherd. Apologies to any Hayes and Eugene fans tuned in this evening. We can only go off of the team sheet. We have no control over the shirts, but we will be bringing you commentary of this second half. As a reminder, due to rules and regulations and everything else changing, there will be no extra time. Should the gate get an equaliser, should there be any more goals and it end a draw, we will be going straight to penalties. But there is a mountain for the gate to climb. They are one nil down against a very strong organised outfit but we know they've got it in their locker as Kerry picks up possession looks to play for in we really know that Kerry number 11 has got so much to offer this Margate team had a quiet opening 45 but I've I've got confidence we'll see more from him in this second half. A Marty in possession who looked really lively in the first half, making good tracks down the right flank, gets a cross in and Friend manages to kick behind for a corner. It's certainly going to be an uphill struggle for Margate coming from behind in this second half. They're kicking into the wind as well. There's a slight breeze in Hayes and Yedding favour. It'll be interesting to see what impact that has on this second half. And this will be a case of Margate keeping their concentration up here after the break. The visitors with a set piece opportunity. It looks like they might play it short, but they've certainly got plenty of routines from the training ground. You can see that. We saw that over the opening 45 minutes, a well drilled outfit. And the referee blows his whistle off. Is he going to have a word? What has he spotted? I'm trying to see. Looks like he's going to have a. No, no, he's not picking anyone out. Or is he? It's friend, and we can't quite see the shirt of the opposition player, but both are having a little conversation with the referee, which buys Margate some time to, to organise their shape as they look to defend the corner taking place on our right-hand side here at Hartsdown Park. Donnelly goes short, but the cross goes deep and it's another corner this time being taken from the other side. Margate under some early pressure here from Hayes and Yedding. Substitute Scott Donnelly going across to take this. Fairly quiet start to this second half as 
as you then take this corner. It's a high, deep corner to the back post with a free header for Amati, who just needed to direct it on target, but he can't do that and heads over the crossbar. Yeah, that was a bit of a let off for the gate there. Man unmarked in the box, lucky to be let off. And I think it's important now for Margate to see some momentum, mount a charge on the visitors half. Vose kicking long, good strong header, but Porter gets possession, plays the ball forward, and it runs through to the Hazen Yedding goalkeeper standing under a very red and orange crescent moon overlooking <laughs> Parks Down Park this evening. And the ball trickles out of play there. And it will give Margate an opportunity. Voss's distribution again this evening has been impressive. As the gate will look to ask a few more questions of the visitors' defence. They're, they're a tall back four, very commanding, but there have been glimpses. Ufua, Carey have used some trickery and pace. And Evans as well is dynamite when we can get him on the ball. And that's something that I'm sure manager Jay Saunders reiterated to his players at the break. As Swift chases the ball, can he get an important head? He can't. The ball bounces, but luckily he's able to turn his body it's only and clear. Half cleared though, and the opportunity is still alive. Good effort there on the half volley. Those managers to hold on to it at the second attempt. Margate living dangerously here. Hazen Yedding managing to get an attack underway straight from a Margate goal kick. Base is looking at his options there. Interestingly, the first few times Margate electing to go long from the goalkeeper kicking into this wind, but it's a good kick this time going out towards Ufua, but yeah. the referee says Ufua joined play from an offside position. Hazen Yedin looked to get that free kick underway quickly, the referee not having it and calling it back. I think there's a slight lack of quality to this opening phase of the, the half, lots of long balls but not really kind of giving given much quality we've seen both sides put together some really nice attacking moves we know that they can play the ball on the deck and that's the kind of style of football I guess we we now tend to enjoy more rather than that aerial battle you can really see Hazen Yedin starting really lively though in this second half they they really look like they want to get a second goal to try and put this game to bed and then Finally, really good ball sweeping ball out to the left flank there getting play underway and they can pick out a quick pass as well. As the ball goes down the left-hand flank, Moncur will look to divert the danger and stop the cross going in. First time cross bounces in the 18-yard box and Porter's having to nod the ball behind for the third corner of these opening stages of this second half for Hazen Yedin. Yeah, flurry of corners for the visitors who do look dangerous from set piece opportunities, the gate are going to have to stay alert and organised for this one as well. We saw the earlier effort, man unmarked in the box, it's going to have to be some tight marking not to gift the visitors a second. Row taking this corner, Go drops at the front post and the referee has indicated it's come off a Margate player and it's a fourth corner in these opening moments here for Hayes and Yedin. Donnelly causing a bit of confusion coming short for these corners. Margate not too sure whether the cross is going to go short or go long and Hayes and Yedin looking really dangerous in these opening stages second half with another corner which Vos commandingly grabs and manages to roll out to Monker who's under pressure is robbed by Rowe chance for Rowe skins the keeper and slots it into the bottom of the corner the early pressure from Hayes and Yedin pays and the score's now 2-0 we said the gate couldn't afford to gift the visitors anything and unfortunately that was a bit of a gift there but Margate need to lift their heads up now. It's about that leadership on the pitch, a disappointing goal to concede. You could see the intentions were there to play quick, to look at the counter, to try and catch the visitors when they didn't necessarily have their shape and organisations but unfortunately these guys are ruthless and it didn't quite come off and it's 2-0. That mountain has gotten slightly harder to climb 
And let's see what the gate can pull off now. The former Iron Appa striker, Rowe, getting his second for the, of the game. Showed some kind of Spanish-esque dance moves in the celebration as well there. As Prestige picks up play, this is what we're going to need now from Margate to charge, show their character and look to mount a comeback. It's the, it's the FA Cup, there can always be some magic and there will certainly need to be if Margate are going to get anything out of this ties. Carey looks to get the cross in, the block is made, the ball bounces around and unfortunately the visitors are able to clear without too much trouble. As Kerry again picks up play, looking at his options around him, he's, he's closely surveyed there by three Hazen Yeadon players and the ball goes out of play. They're not going to make it easy, are they, the visitors? They defend in numbers. They're still looking, they're still really vocal, uh, look to be still getting to get attacks underway even though they lead 2-0. Certainly no signs of them shot, shutting up shot at the moment. I think you as well just see the experience and the age of our visitors, the maturity. They're a lot, lot louder than the gate team, organising constantly at the moment. And Margate needs a little bit of that. It kind of feels like the game needs a bit of a spark, whether it is that crunching tackle or the, the getting that thing, second ball. Margate have got some really talented strikers in the side and one bit of magic can really potentially bring this game back to life and potentially get Margate back into this tie. Yeah, just probably stamping that physical authority on the game a little bit more as well would be good. There's only one yellow card been distributed so far and that was to Shepherd who is off the pitch. The ball has switched over to the left hand side, a bit of space for Hazen Yellen, ball played down the channel, it's a bit too much and Rowe can't get onto that and he runs out, Bo's going across to collect the ball to take another goal kick here. We didn't do our score predictions did we? <laughs> we missed that, but I think both of us knew before the game this was going to be a, a tough tie for the gate. I might not have told you Charlotte but I did predict 2-2 two, two, and then a Margate win on There players. we go then, right, well if you've predicted it, it's going to happen, let's will, has it will it so too. <laughs> Still plenty of time here in this Emirates FA Cup tie. Like you say, it only takes a minute to score a goal and if you can halve the deficit, it's anyone's game. I think it is in those situations as well though where you do miss the noise of the crowds, don't you? As well, obviously we're still allowed to have supporters in and we're very fortunate to with the government announcement today that teams higher up in the pyramid won't be able to allow crowds anytime soon. Really crisp pass, passing here from Hazen Yedin, managing to get the ball into the last third of the pitch, carving out an opportunity, good step over and a shot and it fizzes just over the crossbar, nearly 3-0 there whilst the substitute Donnelly lays down, he looks to be in some discomfort here. I think there just has to be a little bit more industry in looking to win possession back, closing players down. If, if Margate can add that into this half, the visitors will not get it all their way, which is unfortunately how it's kind of unfolded in these opening 10 minutes, as you can hear the players exchanging a few instructions, a few memos to one another. It's interesting actually, the more goals that Hazen have got, the louder they've become mm -hmm. actually, they're really vocal here. And of course, buoyed by confidence and uh, that will be a disappointment for the gate, but it is exactly about how they respond. Can they take away the instructions given to them by the management team at the break? Just stamp that authority and, and showcase what they can do a little bit more. It does look like potentially a discomfort in injury there, whether he's landed awkwardly on his shoulder. We will soon find out as the physio provides some treatment taking a bit of time, I'm sure it will be effectively added on to the end of the game by the referee. I'm sure there won't be any time wasted at this stage. The Margate side missing a couple of what you'd expect to be usual starters here tonight. Richards is on the bench potentially, we, we understand that he's got a slight 
injury, hence he wasn't able to start today. And the Gillingham youngster, Bancroft, who scored on the weekend away at Brightling Sea Regent, his parent club, Gillingham, wanting to keep him back potentially for their own FA Cup games later on in the season if necessary, so he's not available tonight. Both being big misses for this Margate side. So it looks like Connolly will be able to carry on in a couple of minutes of play. And it will be Margate who kicks up with Voss, who for a foul there. And this is the kind of opportunity, again, we'll be looking for Margate to be ruthless, to ask some questions of Jack Smith, who's had a relatively quiet evening here in Margate so far. Thank you for joining us on Gate TV. If you want to see the action, if you want to see the goals, you can watch them tomorrow. They will be available. We've also got some really good interviews with manager Jay Saunders coming up. He had a grilling from supporters of all ages, including two representatives from our youth club. It's a cracking interview. That will be available very soon. It's a poor delivery and after a really long build up there and again Hazen Yedin really looking sharp on the attack now with number 10. Amaretti, yeah, he's Amaretti. so dangerous. Oh and that's a great challenge there, really strong challenge from Burnett putting that counter attack to bed, kicking the ball out for a throw in. And credit where it's due as well, John Uthra there tracking back. He's, he's worked hard again, it's not for a want of effort from the Margate team, but unable to grab a goal thus far in today's FA Cup tie. The first competitive game here at Margate since March, which just seems ridiculous. It's a season we won't ever forget as Porter shakes off the foul, launches it long, but the ball is shepherded out by the skipper. Yeah, strong defending there from McDevitt, sh shielding off Evans as they both challenge for that ball. Downing now, clips the ball forward to Amati. The ball's flicked on by Margate Head, so the Hazen Yedding attacker wasn't offside and there's a hot shot that's dragged just wide of the post, so close to 3-0 there. The score remains two goals to Hazen Yedding, Margate near. I think Margate now really having to look at tightening up that defence. It's, it's far too easy for the visitors to engage with play in the 18-yard box. For me, I think that part of the issue is that the ball is just coming back so quickly. We haven't really seen much hold-up play from the Margate side uh, in the attacking half. and It's, it's free reign for Hazen Yedin to get attacks under the way. The defenders have been under a lot of pressure throughout this whole game. I think it's just that situation, if you're the manager, what options do you have on the bench? It's an extremely young bench. Jack Richards, it might be a little bit too soon to get him involved and Noel Leighton still out. That, that and then the rest is, recruitment uh, for a striker uh, is it's apparent players. again, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But if you are a Hazen Yeding, Yeding, maybe you can correct us, supporter tuned into the commentary, the team have been impressive, they've been clinical, and it's been a very professional display. It certainly has. Uh, Margate really need to get some magic from one or two of their players to bring the side back into this game. But it's not looking lightly at this moment as Hayes and Yedding have another set piece which they're looking to missile into the Margate box. It's a very high ball towards Amati who manages to pick the ball up just outside the box but can't control it, takes his eyes off it. Fortunately for Margate, it goes out for a goal kick. Yeah, that's a difficult one to defend for the gate, but they've been able to do so. And without wanting to sound too repetitive, Voss will pick up play and, and look to charge a more productive attack for Margate. It, it certainly looks like this wind is working in Hazen yet in favour. They're, they're launching the balls forward and either getting an attack underway or putting the Margate goalkeeper under pressure from his own goal kicks. But Great Margate's pass by well. friend there. Yeah, really good clearance. Finds the feet of Evans. Evans turns inside. Opportunity here for Margate down the left flank with Porter picking it up in a bit of space. Good feet from him. Finds Ufua. Crowded out though, the Hazen Yedian players so hungry to win the ball back. Crowding oh, this out is Margate. better for Margate. Good battling. Burnett playing the ball inside to Evans, he can't hold it. Chance for the counter attack. Rowe can't find the feet of striker Kearney. And again, Rose picks it up, lays it out to Friend. I think Porter doing everything that he can there to propel 
and push the gate forward 100% from Jay Porter, which is nothing less than you would expect. He's a firm favourite amongst supporters. Good clearance there from Porter. A bit of time and space now in the centre of the park for Burnett. Finds Sessignon in acres of space down this right hand side. Really good early cross into the box, but this, there's nobody there to get on the end of it. And again, Hayes and Yedding comfortably clear their lines. But good work there from Connor Evans. You've got to keep that intensity up to enforce the clearance and, and keep this pressure on. If, Mar if Margate can sustain this, you'd like to think there'd be more pressure it's on the visitors. It's great to see Burnett really controlling the tempo of this game when he gets on it. He's getting funny himself in good positions in the centre of the park and picking out some good passes. Here you see him dropping in a little bit deeper, looking for the pass. Fortunately finds Carey, lays it out to prestige now. The referee pulling the play back for a free kick for Margate, just on the edge of the centre circle. The referee will not allow any uh, quick, he wants a dead ball scenario here. It's kind of affecting the tempo a little bit, but Prestige will perhaps it's a little look bit at his options a little bit more now. A little bit more difficult to stop the ball moving when it's on these artificial surfaces. So you really do have to make sure you plant the ball still and stop the wind blowing it out of position. One thing that's really impressive about the visitors is their tenacity pressing the ball. They are not giving the Margate players too much time to think about where they want to place look at it. Friend being chased down, no time at all. Yep. But the quality from Friend showing there, finding the feet of Evans. Evans doing really well to keep possession, but Hazen Yedin keep pushing the Margate players back towards their own goal, not able to turn and get an attack underway themselves. Much, much better from the gate there, though. It looked like Williams was all over Barnett, but he's shrugged it off. John for us, surrounded by players. It's a real intense tempo, but it's better now from Margate. They're charging forwards. Ufra, if he can pick out a teammate, he's won the advantage, but he's going into traffic. The pass is on to Porter on the left-hand side, but he just didn't see it. And it's now Margate who are under pressure as Carey tracks back. Sessignon picks up possession, Barnett. Plays it straight forward. Unfortunately, at the moment, Margate picking the passes through the congested areas. They probably need to look at the pockets of space to really hurt the visitors. Yeah, I think uh, Noel Layton would have been a great player to have in this game because of his strength of his back to goal. He would have done a really good job holding the ball up and flicking it on, potentially with Ufa running off him. We haven't got him here tonight. We've got Connor Evans now laying the ball off. Chance for Margate now with Sessignon out on the right flank. Gets the cross in towards the middle of the goal. And again, it eludes the Margate attackers. Evans doing really well with his to barge. Hazen Yedding player off of the ball. Gets a cross in and that is comfortably held for Jack Smith. He would have been delighted with that, that ball coming into his midriff. Do you know what though? That is what Margate needs right now. That work rate from Evans. It's giving something for the crowd to have a bit of a cheer about, really. Yeah, and as we've seen several times throughout pre-season, you see it in football, mistakes happen that look like it took Kearney, a touch on the arm, but Kearney the referee doesn't. Well, he predicted that ball running on Margate, defending particularly well there. The referee doing Margate a favour and giving a free kick in contentious circumstances. It's end-to-end -end now. Margate really looking to try and get back into this game. Well, this was the frustration of the first half. We know that Margate have the ability to dictate the tempo and they've got it in their locker and if as if I picks up possession then that's exactly what you need to press the ball this is what we've been wanting from Margate if they can keep this up they might just enforce the mistake and the error as Armati picks up possession he's been doing this all game down that right hand flank Porter looking to match it stands toe to toe the ball comes across Rowe looking comes for in. his hat trick on the half volley, can't quite catch it, sails just over. Those attacking three for Hazen Yedin have been absolutely electric tonight, creating opportunity after opportunity. Vos again electing to kick long from a goal from his goal kick. Great kick. Carrying okay, acres touch. of space. Back him up! Back him up! Prestige to carry. Prestige scampering down this left hand touch line. Lays the ball back nicely to Porter. A 
very good cross but again no one's getting on the end of it and Hayes and Yedding survive another attack and get one underway themselves with a long ball from goalkeeper Smith to Kearney that looked like a foul on Porter but nothing given but fortunately the gate carry possession Sessegnon interchanging with Moncur the skipper looks to play it long and it finds Connor Evans who's done really well to win his side the throw in much much better from the gate over the last five minutes as the crowd begins to softly chant and the drum rolls supporters Ryan the team on um, almost a fabulous ball setting on not quite able to get on the end of that after what looked like a bit of a slow start to the second half, Margate slowly getting back into this, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. It's better signs of intensity, work rate, pressing the ball. We've seen our visitors do it. We know it works and we know it works for Margate as well. It's just looking for that kind of fox in the box who will really make those crosses count for something. We'll put the goalkeeper under a little bit more pressure. We'll actually force the goalkeeper into a save or two, but the signs are there as Prestige carries the ball forward. He looks at his options, finds the run of Evans on the left-hand side. Burnett in possession, chips the ball forward towards the 18-yard box. Kerry not quite able to bring that under his control and Hayes and Yedding clear their lines with a player of their own down on the halfway line. Margate electing to continue to play on. Porter crossing is blocked and it goes out for a throw and now the Hazen Yedding player is able to get some attention from the physios. To be fair his teammates didn't play it out so I don't think Margate were under any obligation to and much much better play from the gate who will probably enjoy actually having a little bit of a pause in proceedings it's been a bit of a breathless second half. Again, I'm sure every second of this injury time is going to be counted by the referee and who knows if the gate can get a goal back now, those minutes of extra time could prove quite valuable. It is all to play for. If the game is a draw, we go straight to penalties. And who knows, the magic of the FA Cup, can you see the gate scoring three goals? Is it Christmas come early? Am I wishing for too much? Well, you would say Margate's strengths are, are their attacking forces and uh, two on the weekend and certainly in some of the pre-season friendlies, we 3-2 um, victory against Ramsgate. Mar uh, Margate's certainly capable of scoring in this game. They haven't had a few opportunities, just nothing cutting edge to really test for goal goalkeeper Smith so far. I think you make a really good point earlier about if um, Noel Layton had been available for this game, like he's such a good leading forward to sort of bully defenders and there hasn't been too much of that but that being said John Ufa has again worked so solidly for the gate. He is improving with every single game. You can really see him flourishing under the management of Jay Saunders and his coaching staff and if the gate can continue this bit of play you'd say they deserve to half the deficit and then game on, game on. Margate looking to get this throw underway as the injured Hazen Yedding player returns to the field of play. Porter looking for his options, finds Friend a bit deep, he's chased down by Rowe, finds the feet of Burnett, plays it to Monker who turns well, looks to dink it round the corner to Ufua, can't find him and again Hayes and Yedding clear their lines and, and push their side further up the pitch. I think it's testament to the gate having more impetus in this last few minutes that that's the kind of attack now that the visitors are having to do, they're having to clear their lines. And it's down to Margate now to make this possession count as Monker picks up, he almost treads on the ball and play is given away as the substitute feeds row and it's another good save by Vos. he's already proven to be a very very astute sign in by manager Jay Saunders I think the corner is going to take place and maybe a substitution for the home side as the minutes ebb away I suppose there's no harm in, in looking to change it up a little bit to to get a goal and, and to put more pressure on the visitors Hazen Yenning with yet another corner in this second half and they're taking their time with this, winding down the <laughs> clock a little bit. Alex to cross deep into the six yard box, it bounces and eludes everybody 
apart from the referee saw yep. a, a touch from a Margate player and has given another corner. Margate looking to make a substitute. Yeah, I can see Kitman Allen with his yeah. electronic board there, so we know exactly who's coming on and off. We weren't too sure about the, the visit substitution, so apologies if we've got that one wrong. We're just working off our team sheet. But yes, it is the visitors yet again who have got another corner. You certainly don't want to be making a substitution just before Bad a corner. <laughs> it is, it is, and so and a corner comes in, it's deep, real fizz on these crosses, but it goes straight out for a goal kick. And while we have this substitution, I believe it is youngster Charlie Hatton coming on in place of number 11, Luke Carey. But let's, um, let's shout out some of the player sponsors who've got involved with the club this week. Thank you to Hilary Friend who has sponsored assistant manager Jamie Coyle, both home and away. And on the note of Luke Carey, thank you to Tony, Dawn and Anthony who've said, Luke, enjoyed watching you play in pre-season. I'm looking forward to the season ahead. Keep up the good work. And manager Jay Saunders has also been sponsored by JPM2 Design. Thank you to everyone who has sponsored. Sarah Egan, Ella Ives, Mel Williams, all sponsoring Chris Sessing. And there are a few players still left if you want to find out who. And if you want to get your hands on this brand new Margate kit, you can do so. If you sponsor a player, you get their shirt at the end of the year for £65. Plus, you get to put a message in the Matchday magazine, which is available for free on our website. So if you can't be here this evening and you fancy having a little read up, you can download on our website for free. I was really impressed with the match day program. Some real detailed articles. There's an interview with the chairman, the manager Jay Saunders, with his pre match notes as well. Really interesting read. I highly recommend it. Yeah, massive shout out to Kevin Oakley from Oakley Photo Sport for designing and putting together the match day magazine. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Love the front page. I think the design looks first class. As Luke Carey looks to play Ufer in there, he's managed to intercede. The centre back gets the shot away. And that is better from Margate. Ufer are there showing what he does best. He does that so often, doesn't he? Getting in between centre back pairings and, and causing defenders problems. But unfortunately, the effort not on target. But it's something for the gate to build off in these latter stages of the game. Yeah, certainly a promising attack there. Unfortunately, John Ufer not able to hit the target there, but really good opportunity. I think it's a sign of the injury. Obviously, Jack Richards is currently carrying that he's not been introduced to proceedings this evening. He could obviously make a difference with his quality on and off the ball. It's a very, very young bench. But again, as, as Archie Bennett is on the ball, youth really, I mean, the way that he has played in today's game, it's been a real battle in that midfield and he's shown maturity way beyond his years. As he picks out another great pass to Ufra, gets it back, launches it up high, giving Reese Prestige something to run on. He's going to Get, get, invite the pressure there much much better for Margate. Yeah. Prestige pushing further up the pitch here looking to support the attack. The referee just having a word with Prestige for some uh, talk back to the referee for that decision he's given. But the one promising element for Margate in the sense that although there's not many options necessarily on the bench for manager Jay Saunders to choose from, the two main attacking players, Evans and Ufwa, are certainly looking very sharp and fit this season and will certainly be able to be, continue pressing for the remainder of the game. Kearney doing well to lay the ball off and a little chinked ball forward which Friend is defending well and sees out for a goal kick. Yeah, Friend using all of his experience there to shield out the ball. And I think it's one of the points that um, Jay made in an interview midweek about one of the positives from pre-season has been the youth system. I think the club can truly say now it has got that youth player pathway so that any youngster, whether they come through under sevens, through to under 18s, they know that if they're good enough and they work hard enough, they will be granted an opportunity. And as we've seen with Archie Burnett, he's taken his opportunity with both hands and he's performed really well for Margate this evening as Sessegnon picks up play, shakes off the attentions of his marker and the gate looks to mount an attack on the right hand side. Yeah, it's looking promising now. Evans again picking the ball up in a bit of space. Opportunity for Margate driving forward with Prestige who finds Porter. Porter elects to take a touch 
looking to shake off his marker, rise the challenge, the referee gives him a free kick, perhaps could have let play go on a little bit there to see if Margate could benefit from the cross, but he doesn't, and, but still, free kick in a dangerous position. Yeah, clumsy challenge there, Porter take him on on the shin, but he wins his side a free kick in a very dangerous position, and with Moncur as well, we know that he's got that quality in a dead ball situation like this and it would be a great time wouldn't it to half that deficit yeah really good opportunity here let's hope for a good delivery it is flicked on at the back post it's a header it hits the post the opportunity is still alive though but Hayes clear their lines a couple of players down here in the six yard box Hayes and Yedding's defender down injured there the home contingent unimpressed <laughs> with that one as you would expect but it's a head injury so no choice there but oh rattling the woodwork there really Marvick coming there. agonizingly close Liam Friend rising highest gets a good strong header onto it and the visitors clean sheet is currently preserved thanks to the woodwork but much much better here and we're seeing a couple of the Hayes and Newton players stretching a bit of cramp going on there maybe this is a chance for Margate to impose that extra fitness and ask a few more questions in the latter stages. Yeah, they, they've been playing at a really high tempo, Hayes and Yedding. They've been chasing down every ball, every Margate player, not giving a second in possession. And it, perhaps their legs are going to be tiring a little bit in these latter stages, which might give the youthful Margate side a bit of an opportunity to potentially get themselves back into this game. We shall see. <laughs> It has been a, a good game to enjoy. I think the FA Cup is such a special competition, isn't it? And for whoever progresses to the next round, there's some prize money to collect along the way, which will be incredibly important for non-league clubs. The government's guidelines today really scuppering plans for National League clubs, but as it stands at the moment, clubs at our level are still able to have supporters here at Hartsdown Park, and that is in part due to really thorough procedures and, and COVID restrictions and things like buying your ticket online. It seems silly and it might seem a little bit trite, but the whole reason is to limit people's contact and to make the track and trace system as strong as it can possibly be. So it might be an inconvenience to purchase a ticket beforehand, but if it enables people to come and watch this club in a safe environment, I think it's something we can all stomach for the foreseeable future. Because it's so important, isn't it? If we think Tunbridge Angels, Dover, still unable to have football players, how are they going to pay their players? How are they going to survive if the turnstiles can't open? So Eric and I maintaining our social distance this evening. It's good again to see everyone following the guidelines here this evening, isn't it, Eric? I think the club deserve a pat on the back for how they've implemented these new procedures. Not only the club, but also the supporters who've come in as well. They've really been following the proceedings here and have been really supportive of what the club's put in place in order to make this game go ahead and the referee now looking to get play back underway. We have had a few injuries of the Hayes and Yedding players so far so we should have a few minutes stoppage time added to this fixture so again another opportunity for Margate to get back into this game. With the um, substitutions taken into account I would be expecting a minimum of five minutes to be honest. We will see, we will see. I still feel there's something to be written here. I do not feel like this tie is done and dusted. We know how much the FA Cup means to the players, to the football club, and they will be wanting to impress upon themselves. Particularly that second goal, it was a really sloppy one to concede. I know the, the team will be disappointed with that, but they're showing much more promise over these past 10 minutes. Session on in space, the next cut inside this time. He's now running across the pitch, dragging a few players with him. Does really well to find his counterpart on the other side, Porter. Now, Margate looking to build up an attack, a little dink ball forward, which can't quite find Evans. And Hayes and Yedin looking to clear their lines, and they do so well with a long ball towards striker Kearney, who's been chasing after every long ball this game. He's shown some real energy and determination, as has his other strike partners, Rowan and Amati. They've looked a really good trio up front. Yeah, the visit's doing really well there with their defensive shape behind the ball. They're an organised team, but certainly Margate enjoying the better of the contest. 
over the last five to ten minutes, but it's about making it count. We know that Margate have enjoyed spells of possession. It's that kind of cut in, ruthless edge up top as Jay Porter rises highest, gets a really strong header there. Evans on the ball. Can he create something? He certainly looks to find Burnett and Prestige plays the one down the left hand channel there. Unlucky for Porter there, that handball call. This new handball rule as well. I mean, we see it at the highest levels of the game. It's a bit of a tough one there. As, oh, okay, a bit more sportsmanship. There's a few players stretching out. I'm sure we'll hear the 3G excuse. But let's just hope the referee's watch is working effectively because Margate are having the better of the tie right now. As in any, I suspect we'll look to set up a, a strong defence here to see out the final 10 minutes of this game. They lead here 2-0 at the moment and are on course for the £2,250 prize money for winning in this first round, a qualifying round in the Emirates FA Cup. That's never a foul there. Great stuff from Margate. A strong delivery there. A bit of a cross shot. Unfortunately, it sails over the crossbar and goes out for a goal kick. Another opportunity spurned by Margate there. Monker chasing as the goalkeeper takes on some refreshment. Monker makes sure that he has the ball because Margate will be wanting to push their foot on the gas and seize this momentum a little bit. As Jack Smith lines it up. Taking a bit of time here, the referee asking Smith to speed up proceedings. He elects to kick long towards Kearney, who gets his head on it and it, it deflects onto Porter. Porter in a bit of trouble with his back to goal. Kearney hounds him down and manages to win possession. Really good play from the striker there. He's been a real bee in a bonnet of the Margate defence as Kearney today. They're just relentless as the foul is easily won. Yeah, real they're doing, they're doing all the dirty bits well yeah. as well, to be fair. They're a very well marshalled team. They've, they've obviously got a game plan that they've executed particularly well, but I still feel like there's a goal to be had here for Margate as Porter makes that run on the lap. Can Connor find him? Can he look up? He does. He manages to get the pass there as Porter puts on pressure. Can Uthor get a sniff? Shoot, man! <laughs> Can you not hear? And, there, and it is a penalty. Porter scampering down the left-hand flank, taking a bit of a gamble, bit of space, gets a shot off, and the Hazen Yedding defender slides in and blocks it with his hand. An opportunity here for Margate to get back into this FA Cup tie. There we go, Eric. Your coach and tips on the sideline. Take a shot. It hits the arm and Margate get a penalty. And it's what they've deserved for this last period of play. If you earn your luck. You work for your luck. And Porter, particularly in this second half, has been doing so much. But now there are questions of if it's a handball, is there a yellow card? It doesn't seem like it. It seems like the penalty is enough as a punishment. Ufra picks up the ball. He's getting a few little words in his ear from the opposition. If I was his teammate, I'd be pushing them away, but yeah, uh, you know, you know, there we you go. Know, one of your experience heads, prestige, <laughs> yeah, your friend on. getting in there and getting that Hazen Yedin player out of his ear. But John Ufa, he's been electric in pre-season and I'm sure he's very confident in getting this penalty into the goal. Let's see Fingers what happens. Fingers crossed it would be a great time to half the deficit and nothing less than Margate really deserve. And I'm pleased it's Porter as well. I think he's been really impressive worked ever so hard and got his just rewards but can Ufua step up to convert yes he can what a game penalty. on struck hard and high into the top of the net Margate back into this tie with probably including added time a good 10 minutes to go John there with another goal set up the two on Saturday he hits the mark again a really really well taken penalty Whatever those words of encouragement were from the opposition <laughs> before he steps up. Paid, no dividends. The number nine slotted at Cooley and it is game on in this Emirates FA Cup tie. Can Margate get back in this game? I'll be interested to see how Hazen Yedin cope with this pressure of only a one goal deficit with the momentum in Margate's favour. Uh, has got a spring in his step. He just doesn't stop. He's an engine. He, he looks electric and I'm sure that he'll be looking to 
pull this tie level if he can when the opportunity arises. But Hayes and Yedding are in possession at the moment. Opportunity, uh, ball's played into Rowe, who's got a brace so far. Really good tricky feet from him. Looking for his teammate Kearney. The ball's spilled out and there's a shot from distance well over the bar and Vose is going to look to get play underway as quickly as he can here. Yeah, the ball is kicked in straight away from the Margate bench. They want to turn this game up a notch in the final stages. That first half we bemoaned a lack of intensity just because we know there's so much more in this Margate team. They've shown better glimpses of, glimpses of it in the second half. They've halved the deficit, which was very much deserved in my opinion. Can they get an equaliser? That is the big question. That goal came from Porter hugging the touchline and the ball being switched play to him and he's really hugging the touchline here looking to emulate what he did in order to win that penalty and that looks like friend has fouled Kearney. Kearney using his experience there. To yeah Kearney doing everything you want in a, in a centre forward hasn't he? He's been physical, he's known how to use his body to win fouls like that. A bit of a soft one there the but we'll give the credit done. to him. He hasn't, he hasn't scored. Don't say that Eric. <laughs> I think he might be run out for today. I can't see him getting one. It's certainly gone a lot quieter on the Hayes and Yeddings um, bench and also the players are a lot less vocal. Probably a little bit of nerves settling in or, or is it concentrating on the job a, a bit more? Connor Evans there pressing the ball. The pass is therefore loose and Margate win possession. And again, credit to him picking out the pass to Porter. He navigated some room and space and, and executed it and Margate were able to win the penalty. Vos now teeing up, he'll look to launch it long. If we're playing behind the defence, the ball pings back. That midfield battle's been an important one this evening. Margate not having a lot of luck with these long clearances from Vos and Vos this time electing to play short finds Swift who then clips it long towards Ufua but is well defended by Hayes and Yelling defenders they've done really well clearing those headers throughout this game. I think it's this direct approach that will work in Margate's favour even if you don't necessarily get the initial touch or header picking up those loose second balls will be really really important one thing's for sure they are not going to let the visitors progress without a fight and you just never know with the FA Cup when it hits those dire moments one touch one clinical finish one moment of magic can turn a tie on its head as Ufua looks to pick up possession but the ball is cleared to Omar Rowe who has been particularly impressive for the visitors Porter getting him a very important touch there. It looks like he was fouled and he was. The referee gives the decision, much to the frustration of the visitors. But again, Porter using his experience to position his body well and do his defensive duties admirably. He's played really well for the gate this evening. As the skipper looks to pass out to Sessignon. You want to see a bit of intensity here from the Margate players to get the ball going. Really clever play there as the ball runs through Moncur's leg to get Porter in possession. Finds Evans. Burnett now dinks it towards Porter who is up against Rowe there, the goal scorer for both goals, who's doing his defensive duties well there to win the throw-in for Hazen Yedin. They've been a really little good match-up. It's been a really interesting battle watching Porter and Rowe, probably two of the most influential players on this game, I would suggest. And one thing to note as well was just the players' reaction, the passion when they won that penalty. You just know how much it means to them, and it can be frustrating when you know you're not performing at the capacity. Opportunity as well. now, Evan, uh, there's a clearance up and over from Hazen Yedin. They do well to just get that away. Prestige getting a little touch on that ball to win possession. Margate just needing a bit of space to try and move the ball up into the upper third of this pitch. Five minutes was the call I made earlier and five minutes is what the referee has granted. And I just think another observation, maybe in the first half, it's something we can pick up with manager Jay Saunders afterwards. Is too many players were winning their too many of the visitors' players were winning their 1v1s, but Margate had much more of an impact. And now you see three players shadowing the substitute there as they look to, oh, he looks to escape them all. Three Margate defenders inside out, lays the ball off, opportunity for a third. Vose making a crucial save to keep Margate in this tie as we move into the final stages of this match. John Ufer turning well, bit of space here now. Rise the challenge, Rowe now chasing him down. 
real intensity to this match in this final stage is prestige now in space finding oh swift in space do you know what it's just i think they're a case of maybe decision making being a bit tired the gate team were in such a good position and the, the decision to elect to play back when we really need to be moving forward in these final stages but it's much much better from Moncur yeah. who finds evans can he take up evans the and distance and it fizzes all over the place smith had to watch that one so carefully and just manages to touch it over the crossbar you can't help but feel if we could have found this performance from minute one what the scoreline could have been this is the margate that we've come to know for pre season hazen yet in manager paul hughes shouting instructions his voice almost gone there uh, he's getting a bit nervous as margate looking to draw level in this tie you can sense danger here can we sense an equalizer though as Moncur whips the ball in Great Good delivery to the penalty spot, well cleared, shot from distance and it is spurned well wide there by Burnett and Hazen Yedding survived a massive amount of pressure there from Margate pushing for an equaliser. In FA Cup ties you talk about big moments and that was a big moment, Bailey Voss there denying, the game could have been put to bed but his save has meant there's all to play for now. So he'll be looking to his teammates down the other end to see if they can convert and get an equaliser. God, it would be... Hazen Yedin looking to take the sting out of this game in the final moments with a substitute from the impressive Dylan Kearney being replaced by number 14, Rico Greco, a defender. Margate looking to play and push up higher. This is the pitch, as you would expect at this stage of the game. Whereas the visitors will be looking to push up and goalkeeper Jack Smith pummeling it down the channel. Porter doing well to get ahead on it. The ball bounces high and over Swift but Sessegnon is there and the ball goes out for a throw in. The final minutes here. I think there's going to be a yellow card for number eight, Scott Shorten, obviously giving the referee I think some verbals there, yeah. <laughs> oh, it stopped again. Will it be another one? You've seen this happen, haven't you? Sometimes in games. Oh, but it's yeah. just making a note of the booking. I was going to say, I don't really... We can't hear anything from up here for obvious reasons. I think the referee dropped his pencil. <laughs> that one won't make the highlights, I'm sure. <laughs> As Friend plays back to Voss. Who I would say has just again been really, really accomplished from Margate. He's unfortunate to have conceded two goals. Made a number of smart saves as Friend switches feet, plays it back to his keeper. As the Margate fans urge their team. They know there's not long left here. Yeah, good clearance from Voss, looking to the fill up. Can't quite win it. Sessignon not able to control the pass, but wins the header. The attack has died down as Hazen Yedin managed to get possession here. Last ditch tackle from Swift. It hasn't cleared the danger as Rose on the attack looking for his hat trick can't quite find his feet and it runs through to Rose. I mean, Rose was absolutely swamped there by Margate players tracking back, which is the kind of work weight that we would expect and the intensity that maybe was lacking in the opening 45 minutes. This game might be going to the dying phases, but Margate are doing everything in their power. Hazen Yedin slowing proceedings down here, swapping throwers twice here and it's going to be a long throw down the channel Good yeah the ball goes high Robinson and the referee calls a halt to proceedings Margate looking really good towards the final stages but not able to draw level there Hazen Yedding turning out victors today with a 2-1 win there we go that is it's been short <laughs> it's been a short journey in the FA Cup but the relentless September fixture schedule does continue. We are back in action here on Saturday afternoon, returning to the league, hosting Car Shelton Athletic. We hope you will join us there. Jay, a valiant performance towards the end of the game, nearly coming back after um, being going 2-1 down, losing to Hazen Yedding today. What are your reflections on the game? Um, I thought we started really poorly, to be honest. I thought a um, million miles from where we were Saturday. I thought we were really sharp Saturday in first. The half hour, 40 minutes, we were brilliant um, against Brighton City, and I thought we were the opposite tonight. We started really sluggish. Um, one or two bright sparks, um, but, but not enough from probably our, I would say our senior players. Um, 
obviously we had to change shape with the injury with Toby not being allowed to play so we were, we were a little bit unbalanced having to play Freddie wide and that but um, yeah just disappointed really with the first half I didn't think we set a good enough tempo um, and even the first 10-15 minutes of the second half we didn't the goals we could see probably could, could have been avoided. Big game coming up on the weekend against Carl Shorten Athletic what did you say to the players after the game to get their minds focused on the next game? Um, I was just really honest with them I, I thought our front two tonight were excellent. I thought Conor, Conor Evans probably his best game for us. John Phil has been brilliant since he's gone up top. And I think the pair of his right rate was great. Um, Archie Burnett, Burnett as a 17 year old kid was, was probably our, our best player. Um, delighted with him. I just said to the boys, the squad's really stretched at the moment, really, really thin. If you look at the bench, Jack Rich has pulled out of the bench. Well, he's got a hernia at the moment, um, so he could have gone on the bench. And then we've got sort of Josh Stewart's 19, and we had sort of 16 year olds on the bench again. Charlie Atten come on as a 16 year old kid, and I thought it was excellent. Um, but that's what we're sort of relying on at the moment. It's got stretched. So we've just got to try and get everyone fit, um, and hopefully we'll have Toby back. Uh, Jack Rich is like, he'll miss it. Um, but was allowed on a seven day approach, which I can speak to a player tomorrow. So. Hopefully we can get a deal over the line there and we've got to try and bolster the squad. But I don't want to, I, sort of, uh, I'm a big believer in never too high, never too low. And um, we were good Saturday, but a really good performance. So tonight we weren't quite at it. And I think with the squad we've got, with the, in, the sort of youth we've got in it, we're going to get an inconsistent spell. And um, that's when you need just more senior players. And I didn't think today they helped the young ones out. Given the performance that you had Saturday with the victory against Brighton at sea and then the loss today, you've highlighted youngsters potentially leading in to inconsistencies. Was there anything else which might have affected the performance I today? I don't want to. I don't want to say it's completely down and inconsistent um, because then that's that's not doing them justice because I thought they were the, the better lads. But um, what I should say is a youthful squad really. Um, if you're looking at it, really friendly, and those are our senior ones, and, and but I even put some of them the Swifties as your captain. Like, Bit more from him, he knows that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, he's been suspended, and he's missed it, so he had played for a couple of weeks really. But I expect more from him, and he knows that. He, he knows that himself. So I just think, um, listen, we need to add to the squad. There's, there's no doubt about it, and we're working overtime to get players in, but it's, it's proving difficult um, for whatever reasons. And um, if we can add a couple of more experienced ones as well as, as the youthfulness we've got. Um, then I honestly believe we'll be okay. But at the moment, with the squad we got and the changes, like you see tonight, missing Jack Richards and Toby, all of a sudden I've had to put Freddie Monko as a right winger, which he's not. But he can do a job for, a job for us there. And um, we kind of had to shuffle things, and, and we need to have a bit more depth in the squad to have the balance. That if we do miss a player, then we can, we can sort of like for like, or at least have another option. Brilliant. Thanks for talking to us on okay. TV. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.